Believe it or not, the PlayStation 5 is already over two years old. It certainly doesn't feel like it. Maybe that's just because people have had trouble getting this thing, or maybe it's just because there hasn't been a ton of killer exclusives on PS5 or Series X for that matter. But despite that, I've actually had a lot of fun collecting for this console. I know this is kind of a dying subject for a lot of people. I don't think I've seen many people that actually are collecting for PS5. And I will say I wasn't initially planning on collecting for this console. A lot of these discs have basically no data on them, and in some cases I will so, still go digitally, right? But for me, there's still nothing better than just having that feeling of, of cracking open a new PS5 game or a Switch game or an Xbox game, whatever it is. And then, you know, once you beat it or if you never play it, which is the case with a lot of these games for me, you can just sit on your shelf and it looks nice. A lot of my, my guilt, because I have such a big backlog, comes from if I don't even see it, which is why I kind of stopped buying digital games. If I buy a digital game and then I decide not to play it or I just get distracted with something else, I have really nothing to show for it. At least with the physical copy, I, I have something on my shelf to remind me like, oh yeah, I wasted money on that. So today I'm going to go through every physical PS5 game I have acquired over the past two years. Uh... I'm going to say this is probably one of the bigger PS5 collections on YouTube. I certainly haven't, like I said, been really trying, but when I see a good deal, I, I usually will pick it up. So let's move this grimy PS5 controller dual sense out of the way. So starting off here, we have a game I just recently beat for the very first time, A Plague Tale Innocence. Um, this is a sealed copy because it was on PS Plus, but I wanted to own it physically, go figure. Um, this is, of course, developed by Asobo Inter uh, Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. Uh, definitely, if you are a fan of Last of Us, I would say don't expect Last of Us exactly, but expect like a, a double A version of The Last of Us. And I don't know, I had a really good time playing through this game with my girlfriend uh, over the the past holiday break here, which is why I went ahead and also picked up a Plague Tale Requiem on sale, uh, I think for like 30 bucks. I have not gotten around to playing this too much yet. I played like an hour, seems like more of a Plague Tale in a sense, which honestly for me, that's, that's nothing but a good thing. Next up, we have Absolov End of Gods. This was, as you'll see with a lot of these games, just a cheap game that was on Amazon. It's still sealed. I haven't played it. Sorry about the glare there. Uh, so for those games, I don't really have too much to say. Here we have a game that is still sealed that I actually I actually platinum this. <laughs> uh, this is Among Us, the crewmate edition. I'm a little salty. Uh, Amazon recently had the, I think it's the ejected edition for like 25 bucks. I think I paid 10 for this. Uh, I platinum the game, so I was like, you know what? I should own that phys uh, physically. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> Among Us physically on Switch there, or on, on PS5. That's Certainly something I own. Also, I noticed they actually sent me a copy that's not really sealed. Although, frankly, I'm not too worried about the value of, of, of Among Us. Gonna be honest. Next up, we have a game I picked up in 2021, Aliens Fireteam Elite. I did not play too much of this. I'm not gonna sit here and say, like, oh, I'm a huge Aliens fan, but I don't know. It's just gonna kind of low budget and maybe not very good. And then we have a game that has been on my backlog for a decade or so, Alan Wake Remastered. I watched my brother play this growing up on 360, and I always wanted to play it um, for myself. I liked Control, I never got the Quantum Break, and uh, certainly with Alan Wake 2 coming out, I should get to this soon, but uh, really cool to have this physically on the PS5, you know, with the Switch, they didn't do a physical copy, uh, and the Switch version is also um, a travesty. Okay, here we have our first PS5 launch game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla Gold Edition. Here's, here's what happens with me with any new console launch. I always get in my head that I'm going to play Assassin's Creed, or, or really just any launch game, but Assassin's Creed's normally there at launch, um, and then I just don't do it. The only Assassin's Creed game I've beaten is Assassin's Creed 2. Why did I buy this? Next up, we have the holy trinity of terrible games. Uh, starting off with Battlefield 2042. I've actually heard this has gotten better. I only played the beta back in, uh, well, I guess summer of last year, or 2021. So I'm actually excited to pop this open. This was like 5 or 10 bucks sealed. So I was like, you know what? I'll pick that up and eventually uh, play it and maybe do a video on it or something. Because um, Modern Warfare 2, frankly, has not been scratching that itch for me. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I think I might want to check this out soon. Continuing that holy trinity of BS, uh, we have Ball and Wonderworld. <laughs> um, this was also a very cheap game, so I wanted to pick it up. I want to get it on Switch. I think I'd rather um, experience it there, because, you know, it's going to be even worse, which I think is just kind of just goes with the uh, the experience of Ball and Wonderworld. Here we have Back for Blood, another sealed game. This beta, I, I played the beta with some friends, and it just wasn't good. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it got better, but... Uh, from from what I played in the in the beta, I just was not enjoying this. I still bought the game, and then actually, I guess it was the the quadrilogy of, of BS games. Although, in my opinion, 
this is the first first hot take of the video. Babylon's Fall, not that bad. I, I actually finished the campaign with uh, a friend a few months ago uh, before the server shut down later uh, next month, and I don't know. I, I actually enjoyed it. It's certainly not Platinum's best, but I think it's fine. I think if they had gotten rid of the live service elements and just made it like a single player or a co-op game, the gameplay's fine. It, it's just a Platinum game. It kind of feels a little bit slower than like a Bayonetta, but... I don't know. I think if maybe Square Enix hadn't just butted in with the live service stuff, this game actually could have been something pretty special. Next up, we have a limited run game. I actually don't remember why I bought this. Um, I think this was, I want to I say November of 2021. They had this up for pre-order. It took like, you know, limited run, 10 months to get here. I played a little bit of Blood Rain on PS2 when I was a kid. I, I frankly don't remember too much about these games. But I was like, you know what? This, is, this would be a cool game to have on the, uh, on the PS5. I do kind of regret not getting it on Switch, frankly, but you know what? This is cool with this slipcover. Um, there's also, I think, that Blood Rain uh, Betrayal game. There's like a, a spinoff that just recently came out for PS5, so eventually I would maybe want to get that. But uh, yeah, this is probably the most expensive PS5 game I have just because it is a PS5 dual pack. I, my hands are sweaty, so they're, it's leaving fingerprints, so I probably shouldn't be touching this. Here we have another PS5 launch game. This one I actually did play, though it was on PS Plus. Bug Snacks. Of course, everybody's talking about Bug Snacks. I actually, hold on. <laughs> I actually have a, a Bunger plush and a Shrabby plush from Fangamer. I really like Bug Snacks. I also have the, the vinyl of, of Caro Caro Benito's song for this game. Uh, I got this guy at PAX, got this one at some other point. Uh, Bug Snacks isn't like the best game ever, but I really enjoy it. I like the, the quirky nature of it, and I wanted to have a physical copy on PS5, as that's where I played it. I platinumed it here, and um, I think it's on the PS Plus like collection now, so if you have uh, the, the the extra ver uh, tier or for whatever that is, uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. Here we have a pretty recent release, the Callisto Protocol. Uh, didn't get too far into this one. I've never played Dead Space, so I'm excited to check out Dead Space Remake later this year, or I think it's this month, actually, if I get it at launch. I don't know if I'll get it at launch. Probably, I'll probably wait for a sale. Um, but Callisto Protocol, people were kind of trashing on it. I thought it was pretty fine from what I played. I played a couple hours. I, I probably should just go back and finish it. Um, but I don't know. I, I thought it was fine, having never played Dead Space, but maybe that's the issue. I think most people's complaints with the the dodging. I mean, it's a little weird, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I got, I got used to it. So uh, Callisto Protocol, it's it could it could have been much, much worse. Back to another PS5 launch game, one of my actual favorite games on the console, I'm not even joking, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Um, I love Call of Duty. I, 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 I've I made my bed, I've laid in it, and I've come to terms with it. Call of Duty is a franchise that I think is just going to follow me to the grave. Certain games I really don't think are that good. Uh, certain games I think are fantastic. This is one of the fantastic ones. This is probably the best Black o or Call of Duty game in the past eight years probably since black ops 3 in my opinion um i had a ton of fun with this game i've seen the community is kind of not super positive on it but in terms of multiplayer zombies and campaign this was definitely the most fully featured call of duty we've had in a very long time so i really enjoyed this game and then of course i also have vanguard uh physically another call of duty game that frankly um obviously nowhere near as good as this I liked it. <laughs> Basically, I've just become an Infinity Ward hater. Um, Vanguard, I, I don't love Sledgehammer or anything, but I don't know. I thought Vanguard was fine. I didn't play it a ton because my friends didn't get it like they did with Cold War. Uh, but Vanguard was cute. I don't know. It, it just it kind of just lacked an identity, but I thought it played better than Modern Warfare 2019. And as you notice, I don't have Modern Warfare 2019 uh, physically. They actually offered the campaign digitally uh, a week early if you pre-ordered digitally. So I just went ahead and pre-ordered it that way. And I don't know. It's kind of nice. I'm going to swap the disc. but um, So I only have these two physically for PS5. Here we have Chivalry 2. I realize I'm talking way too much about these games, so I'm just going to start going through the ones I haven't played a little bit faster. So here we have Chivalry 2. <laughs> Crazy Chicken Shooter Edition. Uh, Wanted and uh, Remake. I don't, don't ask me, okay? Don't even ask. Here we have Dark Pictures, House of Ashes. I played Man of Madon on PS4. Um, terrible, terrible game. Until Dawn was good. This, this is not. Death Stranding Director's Cut. This is another one of those backlog games for me. And I, I think I've just kind of gotten to this point with a lot of Sony first-party games where um, I just kind of procrastinate playing them. This is one of those games that I know I will play this before Death Stranding 2 comes out. Um, and I, I probably played like five hours of this on PS4. But um, eventually, I have the Director's Cut now, so I'll, I'll get to it on there. Deathloop. I don't like Dishonored. So... This is just worse Dishonored. Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles. This game was pretty good. I'm a huge fan of the Naruto Storm series. I actually platinum this game. 
it's kind of lacking in terms of just like it's single player and I don't know I, Demon Slayer in terms of, as a property I'm just not as keen on as Naruto or some other anime that I think would work well for a game from Cyber Connect 2 but um, for what it was it was pretty good I didn't mess with the DLC characters or anything but I think with a Demon Slayer sequel they can refine a lot of this and, and make it a lot better Demon Souls uh, the only Souls game I've beaten is Bloodborne and Sekiro so kind of tells you all you need to know Souls games I, I love them for their aesthetic and their worlds but I've come to terms with the fact that I'm kind of not great at these games, so as we'll see with uh, Elden Ring in a little bit, I have not finished this. Destruction All-Stars, uh, <laughs> this game was a, a abomination. They were going to charge 74 then they dropped it to 20 then they made it free to play on PS Plus, then it was $20, and then I, for some reason, bought it at Best Buy for like 5 bucks. Um, I don't know, it's actually not even that bad, it's just kind of... Um, uninspired uh definitely was taking it like fortnite identity crisis crap it had a lot of that going on so i don't know kind of a kind of a miss from sony devil may cry 5 a special edition i actually played a couple hours of this i've only beaten devil may cry 1 and 2 so i, I need to get back to that that trilogy and, and finish 3 and then 4 i want to play dmc even though i know people kind of meme on that game but uh from what i played of this this was the best one so i definitely want to get to this soon Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. I have not gotten around to this. I've actually never played Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, it's kind of one of those games that, like, I know the twist, so it's kind of hard to, like, get into. Uh, visual novels in general are kind of hard for me to get into, but I want to get to this eventually. I do kind of wish I had bought it on Switch. I think Switch would be a better platform for this, uh, but this one actually had some cool uh, goodies inside. I don't know. Little stickers or something. I don't know. A little fake floppy disk for... Uh these characters i don't know um I, eh, i'll probably get to it eventually dungeons and dragons dark alliance followed by elder ring like i said uh i played like 15 hours of this i don't think i got very far these games are overwhelming to me i'll just admit it but i i won't deny that this game was absolutely phenomenal and totally deserved game of the year far cry 6 i bought this on black friday in 2021 and never got around to playing it it's like 10 bucks now uh far cry 5 is fantastic so i, I do think i'll like this um, although it, it was a little bit of a softer review, I think, for, for Far Cry 6. So, I don't know. Eventually, I'll get to this, but um, I'm not exactly in a rush right now. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. I finally finished this just a few weeks ago. This was another one of those, like, backlog games that I knew I needed to do soon. Fantastic game. Probably the best game I've actually played on PS5. I can't think of anything else right now. Um, now, also, I've I've realized I did not incorporate these because these were actually more recent pickups, I guess. Um, I also bought and finished, of course, and did a review for Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. First time playing Crisis Core. Uh, also a fantastic game. And then I also bought a not fantastic game, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Um, it's a Dark Souls. Well, I don't even know. I, I can't, when it, they announced it, it was like, oh, it's a Souls Final Fantasy game. I don't really know if that that I don't know if I'd consider it that, but eh, seem kind of low budget and just kind of messy around the corners, but I'm sure it's fun if you get into it. Here we have four closed. I, I did a pickups video recently. I, it's titled Don't Buy Used Game or Don't Buy New Games from GameStop Online. I bought a ton of PS5 like indie games from that. Uh, this is one of those. Here we have Fortnite The Last Laugh Bundle as well as Fortnite the Minty Legends pack. Um, I have not played Fortnite in a quite a long time, like, like consistently, but uh, I've been getting these codes in boxes just because, like, well, I got these because I wanted the Dragon Ball skins, so I needed V-Bucks anyway, and I was like, okay, normally these go on sale for like 5 or 10 bucks around the holidays, so I don't know, I've been picking those up. Here we have Ghost Runner, this is like a parkour game, didn't get too far into it, it was, I don't know, it, it was, it was alright. Then we have, I'm just kind of stacking them up now, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. This would actually probably be a, a serious contender for my favorite PS5 game, I did not play this on PS4. Um, Sucker Punch, I think, is... Probably Sony's most underrated studio at this point. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is is a fantastic game. One of the most fun open world games I've played in that older style. You know, you still have those objectives on the map. You still have a million little things you can do. But they kind of give you that freedom that it, like a Breath of the Wild does. Um, whereas like Horizon, which we'll get to, um, doesn't it doesn't feel quite as good to me personally. Um, so Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, plat Platinum this as well. I don't think I got all the trophies in Ika Island, and in the, even the Ghost of, Tsushima, uh, Ghost of Tsushima Legends Online stuff was actually a lot of fun with friends, so I don't know, I actually really enjoyed that game. Here we have Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, I didn't finish this one, I probably played like five hours of it. It was cool, um, certainly an interesting, you know, kind of setting and just abilities and you're like basically magic bending and stuff. Um, this one was pretty cool, I, I want to go back and finish this one soon. Here we have Godfall Ascended Edition. This was another one of those launch title games. Uh, this game still looks beautiful. I know, I know some people kind of meme on this. Well, I think everybody kind of memes on this game. Um, definitely bombed. 
I did not play it too much. Was one of those very much like, a, oh, I'm, it's PS5 launch day. I'm gonna put this in and just gawk at how pretty it is, kind of games. Um, but it, I don't know. It seemed fun enough, but I just didn't really have any friends that got it, so that kind of killed it for me. Here we have Greek Memories of Azur, as well as the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Deluxe Edition. I played a couple hours of this, and I and I need to go back to it. This was really fun. Uh, people I, people seem to be sleeping on this from what I played. Um, the, the banter, and I know people are oversaturated with Marvel, but um, if you like the Guardians of the Galaxy at any core level, I think you'll probably enjoy this game. They, the writing was actually really good. Here we have another fantastic PS5 game, Hades. Uh, certainly a game I probably should have got on, on Switch. I think this would be a, a fit better as a Switch game, but Hades is, is absolutely phenomenal. I've only beaten it once, um, you know. This is a game you're meant to beat multiple times. Um, I love Super Giant Bastion. It's one of my favorite indie games of all time. Specifically, their music, Darren Korb, and uh, I think it's Ashley Barrett. Um, they're, the, the, the soundtrack in, in Super Giant games are freaking awesome. So, um, Hades, I, I highly recommend. Hades 2 just announced, of course, last year. Very excited for that. And then a game in the series I've actually never played, Hitman 3. Um, definitely going to get to this eventually. They just announced that they're going to basically be upgrading this to include all three games in like the same platform. I think they're changing the name to like Hitman World of Assassination or something. Um, so, maybe this is the perfect time to jump in on that. Here we have Hoa from uh, that, that GameStop sale I mentioned. And here we have Horizon 2 Forbidden West. Horizon, I don't think, is for me. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I beat the first game. Maybe I just needed to take my time with it more and just try to immerse myself in the world. But I don't know. I just didn't really ever get too invested into the story until, like, the very end when it, you know, no spoilers. Um, I remember when they announced Horizon 1, and I was so excited. It looks so sick. And I still think, like, the design of the, the dinosaurs and, and all this is, is awesome. But... There's something just missing in the gameplay for me. I don't know. I, I need to play this more and give it a shot. But um, after finishing Horizon 1 finally last year, I think uh, maybe Horizon just isn't for me. <laughs> Here we have Hot Wheels Unleashed, a game that was absolutely for me unexpectedly. Um, this game was a lot of fun. Really impressive visuals for a Hot Wheels game. And just as someone who... I like racing games very casually. Like, you know, I'm talking like the arcade racers. Every four Need for Speed games, I'll play a Need for Speed. Um... I like this a lot. This was actually a lot of fun. Definitely scratched that itch in 2021 for me. This was, I think, a Gamefly sale I got this on, and I, I really enjoyed this one. Immortals of Phoenix Rising. Not even going to talk about that because I have I never played it. Same with In Nightmare. I did not pay $20 for it. I think I paid 10 In Sound Mind, another one of those uh, GameStop cheap games. Here we have A Pair of Shame. <laughs> um, and we'll have another one of these at the end of the video. I have never played Yakuza. I've never played uh, these games either. I played a couple hours of Judgment, and I really, truly believe that if I got into this franchise, and I'm, I'm saying this franchise, including this and Yakuza is one thing, I would really like it. But it's just so daunting because each game is like 30 or 40 hours, and there are so, so many of them. I'll probably try out Like a Dragon Ishin, which comes out, I think, next month. Um, that, th that seems like a good place to jump in. And I probably could just start with Yakuza Like a Dragon, but... Knowing that it's Yakuza 7 makes me not want to do that. Um, this was like a clean slate for me, and I played it a little bit, and I liked it, but I just I just fell off of it very quickly. I don't know why. Um, so definitely those are like another backlog of shame. Like true, I truly feel bad about not playing those kind of games. Here we have Kiwi, another another cheap GameStop game, as well as, ooh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. This game wasn't as good as people were saying, I don't think, but it is probably, certainly, the best Lego game. Um, I enjoyed it. It was fun playing Call with my girlfriend. A little janky, um, and, you know, playing family games like this, it, it's certainly a little weird going from, like, the Nintendo quality standard, and I that's funny because of Pokemon, but, like, Kirby and the Forgotten Land last year came out around the same time, and it was just night and day, the, the difference in just polish and all that, uh, but this game, this game was really fun. I just don't think it was, like, I saw people saying it was game of the year. I don't, I don't know about all that. Life is Strange True Colors, so I was never a big Life is Strange fan, but uh, played that game, platinum it, never played Life is Strange True 2, never played Before the Storm, picked up this on Black Friday back in 2021, played through it with my girlfriend, and I actually really enjoyed this one. I think her name was Alex, I really enjoyed their character, and, and every character in the game, I, I really enjoyed this one, um, It was and it wasn't episodic, which was really nice, um, or it wasn't released episodically, I think there were like chapters in the game, right, but um, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed Life is Strange True Colors, and um, I think it's in the, the hands of deck nine now is the the team's name it's not um don't not anymore i think they're they've got they've got the sauce this was this was a pretty good if they can get one of these out every couple years I'm, I'm totally down for that here we have man eater this game was people were like hyping this up before the ps5 came out 
I think this is definitely one of those games you either get or you don't, and I just didn't really get it. Like, I, it's cool. Oh, you're going around as a shark. You're killing people. It's one of those pretty mindless games, I feel like, and, you know, I'm certainly like a, almost like a collect-a-thon, I feel like, um, but I don't, I don't know. I just, it didn't really hit me in the in the right spot. Here we have Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Launch Edition, another launch title, uh, certainly another contender for best PS5 game for me. I love Spider-Man 2018, love this game, um, and I cannot wait for Spider-Man uh, 2 coming later this year. Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimates. Similar to uh, to Assassin's Creed games and, and like the launch of a console, although this isn't necessarily like time related. Every time there's a new fighting game, specifically Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Tekken, I always buy it with the the, the, the like the dream of playing it, and then I realize I suck at regular fighting games. I, I'll, I'll school you in Smash Bros all day, but like an actual combo input fighter, I'm I'm terrible at these games. NBA 2K21. This was I think four dollars on Amazon last week. Nerf Legends, so <laughs> another game from the GameStop sale, have not played it yet. I bought it because of that Hot Wheels game. Also, this was supposed to be a new copy. Look at that, like, crease they put on it. Um, I bought it because of the Hot Wheels game, and that, that game just kind of gave me some faith, maybe, that a licensed game like this could be fun. I love Call of Duty, like I mentioned, so I feel like a fun little quirky tie-in um, FPS with Nerf could actually be pretty fun. I, I don't know what the consensus is on this game online. I know Hot Wheels people actually, that wasn't just me, people like that game. Um, so I have no idea. Uh, let me know if, if you played Nerf Legends. Is that actually good? Here we have Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I actually platinum this one as well. Grinding that online trophy uh, was um, miserable because the servers were dead when I did it. Um, but uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, it's it's a Nickelodeon Smash Bros. game. It's fine. Definitely janky as all get out. Um, I, I played it before they added, I think, I'm pretty sure they added, like, voices, didn't they? I played it when it came out, like, a month after it came out, and the servers were dead then. No idea if they're active now, no idea how the DLC is, but, um, it, it's fine for what it is. Observer System Redux, this is another game from that GameStop sale. Now, this is one I'm actually, like, excited to play. I've never played a game from Bloober Team. People seem to not like them, um, but this is one I've actually heard decent things about. I know people don't like the medium, or, and they're not excited about, uh, them doing Silent Hill. Then we have Outriders, another game, as you can see, that's sealed that I just never got around to playing. And then Overcooked All You Can Eat. I played and platinum or I think there, I don't even know if there was a platinum, but I, I 100%ed the first Overcooked with my roommate at the time. Um, and that game is, this game's so much fun. Although, I don't know if I can play with my girlfriend. I feel like that would lead to something bad. <laughs> if you don't have, like, a really, really good teammate that, like, that plays games and can, you know, they do, you know, that those minuscule task management and all that, um, Overcooked is hell. Okay, we are finally entering the final stack. There's still probably, like, 20 games. I, I'm not counting. I'll count after, and uh, that'll be the title of the video. Um, here we have The Pathless. This one kind of disappointed me. I'm a big fan of... Um, of well, I've never played Journey, but I liked Flower and I liked um, Abzu, I believe, was, was their other game, Giant Squid. Um, the Pathos, eh, it was okay. Um, then we have Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. Never got around to playing this. Definitely wish I gotten it on Switch, but um, I enjoyed the first game on Switch a ton. Then finally, we have another limited run game, Quake. I picked this up at PAX for $30. Definitely an impulse kind of pick up here. Um, just, it's just Quake. Nothing wrong with Quake. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. This game is fantastic. I platinumed it. Although, um, I remember it being very buggy. Like, uncharacteristically buggy for a an Insomniac game. I definitely recommend it if you like Ratchet and Clank. I, I do, however, think that the PS4 game is better uh, beat for beat. But this game is still awesome. Um, definitely beautiful. Very, you know, fun, impressive mechanics um, that are only available on PS5 with the, the rifting. I don't know if that's entirely true, but, um, really good game. Definitely one of, definitely one of the, ex the three exclusives on PS5, so I would recommend it just because of that. Here we have Real Farm Premium Edition. Of course, you know, I, you know I had to do that. And then we get to two back-to-back -back bangers, starting off with Resident Evil Village. I've actually seen some people kind of down on this game. I still need to play the DLC, but I really enjoyed my time with this. I'm not the type that replays Resident Evil games over and over. I'm not going for, like, the, the speedrun, you know, trophies or anything. But just that first experience with this game, um, seeing all those those freaky, freaky creatures and all that. And I don't know. I enjoy Resident Evil a lot for that first, first impression, and I, I enjoyed Village for what it was. Now we get to the game that I think might actually be my favorite PS5 game. But there's a caveat. I have not beaten it because I don't know what it is, but I am terrible at this game. Now, to be fair, I have not tried to play it in a long time. Um, and I think if I went back to it and like actually sat down with it for another 20 hours, I could probably do it. Um, but it's one of those things where I see people that are struggling with it, and then I see people that just do it instantly. I know they added multiplayer recently. I'm, of course, talking about Housemarque's Returnal. Um, this game really surprised me. I kind of just impulse-balled it. 
back when it released um, without, you know, I, I probably should have done more research, but it worked out in the end, 70 bucks, but I, I did end up really, really liking this game. Um, that third boss is what I was stuck on, man, and I I probably, I don't know, I probably paid it for like 15 hours, I don't know, maybe 20. Um, so I, I, it's not like I put as much time as I should have, given how much I, I really do enjoy the gameplay and how everything in this game works. Um, but um, th this game is really cool. And I know they added multiplayer, like I said, so uh, maybe I'll try to get a friend to play this with me and, and carry me through it, because then you can revive now, which is completely, that completely changes the game. Here we have Riders Republic, another game I got alongside Far Cry 6 uh, back in 2021 and just never played, as well as Rift Breaker. I've actually heard good things about this, though I obviously never played it. Basically, this is the I've Never Played It show, uh, and I'm your host, Botox Media. <laughs> um, this is interesting. This is a signed copy of River City Girls by the, the development team at WayForward. I got this signed at PAX. Um, some of the, the signatures are kind of kind of smearing because this is a sealed copy that I bought at the booth, uh, the limited run booth. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Who I don't know whose signature that is. That, the, the, like, I mean, this was obviously there. It kind of smeared off a little bit, but they just put a bunch of X's. I don't know who that is. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Pretty cool. Here we have another super underrated PS5 game, Sackboy A Big Adventure. If this said Nintendo right here, this would be there would be genuine conversations about this being one of the best platformer games of all time. I promise you, because there are those people that exist with Super Mario 3D World, and I think this game is probably better than that, or at the very least, very close. Uh, Sackboy Big Adventure. I'm not like a Little Big Planet fan or anything. In fact, I actually kind of don't like Little Big Planet. Um, I only ever played the first game, and I just it just wasn't really for me. Uh, but Sackboy Big Adventure, um, Sumo Digital, really, really pulling their weight with this one. This one really surprised me. We have Scarlet Nexus from Bandai Namco. Always wanted to get to that. But then we have four limited run games that I've never played any of them. <laughs> uh, I'm collecting this series on PS5, and I I will play these games eventually. And to be fair, I've, I've played them. I've just never finished any of them. Uh, here we have Shantae, or Risky's Revenge, Director's of Cut. Then we have Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Shantae, Half a Genie, Hero, Ultimate Edition. And Shantae... And the Seven Sirens. So, uh, obviously, I'm missing the first game. I do have that pre-order from Limited Run. I figured I'm not really collecting for PS5, like, hard. I, obviously, this is probably one of the biggest PS5 collections on YouTube now. Um, but if I'm going to go for anything from Limited Run, it should be these at the very least. I'm also trying to get them on Switch. I think I'm only missing Pirate's Curse now, which is super expensive. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Shantae is cute. I like Shantae, and I will eventually actually finish these games. I played the most of the first game on, on 3DS Virtual Console back when I was a kid. So, eventually, I'll get to that. Here we have Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2. I thought this would be more like um, Sniper Elite, and it kind of wasn't, so I don't know. A little disappointing there. Then we have Sonic Frontiers with the Steelbook. I'm not going to insult Sonic fans right now. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, another, another one of those like forbidden backlog games that I just have not gotten around to. Uh, I, I tried playing it again recently, and I don't know. I think maybe I've, like... I feel like I've grown away from that style of single-player game, like that Uncharted kind of style. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, I'm, maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe I just need to wait. Maybe be patient and play it when I'm feeling it. Uh, I can't force that game. Subnautica Below Zero. This game's pretty fun, though I'm not huge on like the survival games, typically. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Uh, this is my first Monkey Ball game that I actually beat, and in that in that moment, I realized I don't think I actually really like Monkey Ball at all. Um, <laughs> this game's super frustrating to a point where I... I I don't like it. Finally getting to the end here, like 10 left. We have Tactics Ogre Reborn. Um, I got this for very cheap from somebody and um, would have preferred it on Switch, certainly, but this is definitely one I want to get to, though. How many freaking Tactics games, how many JRPGs can I really fit into a year? You know what I'm saying? Speaking of JRPGs, Tales of Arise. Speaking of JRPGs, Rainbow Six Siege Deluxe Edition, only at Best Buy. Here we have Tormented Souls, another one of those GameStop games. We have Tribes of Midgar, another game that um, I, I feel like of all the games I've actually played in this video, it's always the one you least expect. Tribes of Midgar is actually kind of goaded. I really enjoyed playing this game back when it came out. Um, I, don't, I haven't played it in a long time. I don't know if they're still updating it, updating it at all. But um, it was this really fun like resource gathering game. Then you, you squat up with your friends and you go defeat these... Um, these, like, Norse gods and stuff, and I don't know, I actually really, really like this game. A game I did not like, however, I actually played this on PS4, traded the PS4 copy in, and then got the PS5 copy for, I think, five bucks or something, which is me completely mentally ill that I would even do that for the white spine. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, this game sucks. Uh, Watch Dogs 1 is fine. Watch Dogs 2 was actually really good, I'm not gonna lie, guys, but uh, Watch Dogs Legion, this game was buggy as hell at launch, and just, eh... 
There was no story. Watch Dogs 2 had such a, like, really actually genuinely good character. San Francisco was such a fun setting. Um, this game's in London. So that's obviously a negative thing. Worms Rumble. I played this on PS Plus when it came out. I don't know. It was fine. I've never played a Worms game before. I, I know this is not indicative of Worms, but um, I don't know. It was it was fine. Then we have two more games from the 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 GameStop sale: World War II Tannenberg and World War II or sorry, World War One Tannenberg, World War One Verdun. There's also a third one I think. I haven't played these games. There is a PS Plus I think World War One game. I think it was like Hell Let Loose that I played. That game was. It was like uber realistic. Not for me. I don't know if these games are good. I'm guessing not. Why are they why are they two separate games? And then the final game in my PS5 collection, I alluded to this one earlier, Yakuza Like a Dragon. I have not played it. So yeah, that is going to do it for this PS5 collection video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I definitely need to get better about beating games in my backlog and maybe beating better games because of these games right here, I beat Babylon's Fall and Cold War and Vanguard. Actually, I guess this this and, and Bucks. I, this is maybe not the best stack to to prove that point, but um, I play a lot of random games, and frankly, most of my time spent gaming is on Switch, admittedly. Um, and a lot of this stuff is just kind of weird, but you know, I, I enjoy collecting for PS5. It's usually, I mean, the reason this is so much is because it's so cheap. Most of these games go on sale so fast. Um, and you know, I just kind of impulse buy them. So I definitely want to get uh, a couple other things. I do want to get, um, God of War Ragnarok. That is obviously missing here. Um, but, uh, overall, this is probably, I'm, I'm just going to say it probably one of the biggest PS5 collections on YouTube. Um, I have no idea if that's actually true, but, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed subscribe here for more collecting videos, uh, usually mostly Nintendo stuff, but uh, every once in a while I'll sprinkle in a, a PlayStation video there as I do have a soft spot for the big Sony. And uh, yeah, until next time, folks, bye-bye.